It's um, always a blessing and a privilege to share God's word with you. I'm really, really excited about this message that God began to deposit in my heart uh, since the last time that I was up here sharing his word with you. <clears throat> and it's a message that I believe it's, it's uh, essential for us as a body of believers, as a church uh, within us, uh, for us, but for those that are outside these walls. We live in perilous times, we live in difficult times, we live in very dangerous times, but nevertheless, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice uh, in it <clears throat> and proclaim His glory. Uh, we live in days that are dangerous, uh, days that are um, uh, extremely uh, violent. Uh, however, you know, God's Word is alive. And it's, uh, God's word is, is powerful to affect every situation uh, that, that, that we can go through and those that we come across are going through. The message that God, <clears throat> the title of the message that God put in my heart is living in the reality of God's word. <clears throat> and I, God deposited uh, these six things, or actually there are more than six, but they're the only ones that I could cram in the 30 minutes that Nina gave me. <laughs> so we'll go with that. Um, so it's about five minutes, five minutes for each uh, uh, item there. Uh, I don't know how many would be willing to give me an extra five minutes. Let me see your hands. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, we've got half an hour still additional to that. So we're good. <laughs> Living in the reality of God's word. God's word it's more than just ink on paper. This is the written word, which in the Greek is known as the logos, um, the written word of God. But it's more than just a written word. It is living. It became flesh in Jesus Christ. And as we get into the written word of God, he uses it to speak uh, to our hearts. And the logos of God, when spoken to our heart, becomes the rema of God, the spoken word of God. He speaks to our heart, to our mind, to our spirit. It is a word from God. To get, however, the rema of God, a word of God directly to us for a specific situation, it is essential, it is imperative that we know the logos of God. Thus, God can give a rema for a specific situation. See, God's word, it's more than just the data that we're given in the logos. God's word is not just passive. It's more than passive. It is active, and it affects more than just our mind and our intellect with data and information that we accumulate and we achieve. It affects our heart. It affects our choices. It affects our behavior, our conduct, our lifestyle, our walk, it affects thus the holiness of our walk and of our life. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to approve what is God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And that's something that we must all come to realize, understand, and really Grab a hold of. And I would like for you to say with me, God's will. Then get past the ceiling of this place here. All right, Lord, let's say it one more time. God's will, God's will is good. It's, good. It's, pleasing, it's pleasing. And it is perfect. It is perfect. Again, God's will for me. Is good, pleasing, 
and perfect. You can say amen. Psalm 119 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. It is a source of wisdom. In the Proverbs, chapter 1, it says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, for the gaining of wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple. It's a tactful way to saying those that are not too bright. <laughs> Knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning. And let the discerning get guidance for understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. Now say with me, the fear of the Lord, say with me, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Again, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. To live in the reality of God's word, there are six things that we must take into consideration. Number one, we need to read it. We need to know it. We need to pray it. Believe it, which is stand on it. Proclaim it and act on it. To live in the reality of God's word, we must read it. We must eat it. We must abide in it. I'm sorry, but there is absolutely no other way that at this time we can, I can tell you that you are able to guess God's word in you. I don't know, maybe in a couple of years with technology going the way it is, we're going to have a chip that's going to be implanted in our brain, and the Word of God is going to be in us, and it's going to be great because now we don't have to read it. God's Word is in us, in that chip. But until then, we've got to read it. We've got to eat, abide, feed on it. You've heard that you are what you eat. And that is true as far as our physical aspect. That is also true as far as our spiritual aspect. You know, if you eat healthy things, your body's going to be healthy. If you eat a large amount of unhealthy things, well, your, your body's not going to be as healthy as it should be. That's why I eat beef, the grass-fed beef, because then I'm eating salad and beef at the same time, <laughs> thinking. <laughs> we need to feed on it and be nourished so our spirit man can be strong when the viruses, the germs, the microbes of the spirit realm attacks our life. The gospel is the power, the dunamis of God. The gospel is the so-so, the salvation, the health of God. And with God's word, you become a word of Powerful, powerhouse. So we need to read it. We need to get into it. We need to abide in it. We need to listen to it over and over and over. Because the word of God says that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. It doesn't say that, the, that faith comes by what you have heard. Faith comes by your hearing right now. Today, my prayer is that when you leave this building, when you go out those doors, your faith would be increased. Your faith would be challenged. Your faith would be strengthened. Your faith would be established in Jesus Christ and in his word. Because of what you are hearing here now. It's not about what you have heard. It's not about Pastor Jim's message. It's not about last week's uh, Phil's message. It's not about the message that I preached or Nina preached several weeks ago. It is about what you are hearing and hearing and hearing now that is going to increase your faith. It's going to strengthen your faith. So I encourage you. 
Go to our website, go to YouTube, and listen again, and hear, and hear, and hear Jim's message, Don's message, Nina's message, Phil's message, my message. So you're hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and feeding your faith. Use what God has provided for us in our technology. The Gospel according to John. Can you hear it? Chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in it. the beginning. Through Him, hearing. all things were made. And hearing. Without Him, nothing was in made morning, that has been made. Ready for work. In Him was life. In the shower, and that life getting ready for the day. was the light of all mankind. During your lunch hour, the light shines in the darkness. While you are and driving, the darkness has not overcome it. While you are chilling, there was a man sent from God whose name You're was John. Hearing. He came as a witness hearing, to testify concerning hearing, that light so that through him hearing. all might believe. Amen. He himself was not the light. You know, in my line of work, and I know in some of your line of work, you know, we do a lot of driving. There's times I drive from Rock Island County to Mercer County, from Mercer County to Henry County, and Henry County back to Mercer and then back to Rock Island. That's a lot of driving that we do there. Put on your Bluetooth earbuds so you can be hearing and hearing, and hearing, and abiding, and feeding the Word of God into you. Can you say amen? amen? Can you say, I'll do that? John 15, you are already clean because of the Word I have spoken to you. Now listen to this. Remain in me. Abide in me. See, the word became flesh, so we now abide in Christ Jesus. Abide, remain in me. You know, when God says something, he says it because it's important. You agree? He doesn't just talk and say things because he likes to hear himself talk. Right, there's something important about what he's saying. So when God says, remain in me, it's important. But then as we continue reading, and it says, as I also remain in you. Now, that's important, too. Not only do we abide in him, he abides in us. His word abides in us. So that's twice already. So God is saying, okay, what I'm saying is important, but not only important, it's very important. And as we continue reading, it, it, the word says, as I also remain in you. Well, wait a minute. There's three times already. So he's saying, okay, what I'm saying is important, it's very important. And for the third time, you better pay good attention because it's extremely important. Amen. No branch bear fruit by itself. It must remain. Whoa, there's a fourth time there. So he's saying, this word remain, abide, live, eat me, is really super, archy, very ultra important that you understand. Because it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. You know the message that this kind of really extremely super archy important to God? I am the vine, you are the branches. If you, well, there it is again. Remain in me and I in you. And that is exactly why, my beloved, that you and I can overcome any obstacles because we can declare he that is in me, that abides in me, that remains in me, is greater than he that is in the world, is greater than the obstacle in my life, is greater than the situation in my life, is greater than the circumstance that I'm going through because he abides in me and I abide in him. So as we... Read and abide in the word of God. We can begin to know the word. Again, I'm sorry, but there's no other way to go about it by, by reading. Either electronically reading or old school reading. Or even listening and hearing and hearing. We come to know it. And as we come to know God's word, we get to know God. We get to know his character, his heart, and to love the things that God loves. We get to know that God is righteous and holy. 
And as he is righteous and holy, he is also a merciful, forgiving God. Second Chronicles 7, one of my favorite passages. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. A couple of things that I want to uh, emphasize here in this passage. Number one, here we find the will of man in play. But we also find God's will for us in play. In this passage, you will read, if my people, you and I, who are called by my name, number one, our will must come in play by humble, the will to pray, and the will to seek his face and to turn from our wicked ways. Again, we must exercise our will. Our freedom of choice, our will to be humble, our will to pray, our will to seek, and our will to turn from sin and walk in his word and in his righteousness. But then we see also God's will for us. He says, if you exercise your will in these things, then I will exercise my will, and this is my will, says the Lord. I will Here, here, I will forgive, I will heal. God's will is to hear, to forgive, and to heal. You know, many times when we go through situations, you know, we think that does God, is he hearing me? Does he hear me when I call upon him? He says, my will is to hear you. Sometimes, you know, the enemy can attack or our mind, our flesh says, you know, has God forgiven me from all of my sins? Am I forgiven? Am I washed? Am I clean and righteous before God? Well, at the beginning of the verse that we had just read, you are already clean because of the word, the spoken word, the rama that I have declared. You are clean, John 15. But God's will in this passage tells us, I, my will is to hear, my will is to declare you forgiven, and my will is to heal. Can you say amen? amen? To know his word is to know his will. He is compassionate. He's a loving father. There is nothing you can do to make him love you more and nothing you can do to make him love you less. He loves you just as you are. With all your faults, with all your deficiencies, with all your expertise, with all your your strength, just as you are. With all your submission and with all your stubbornness. Can you say amen? He loves you just as you are. Check this out. He loves us so much that even while we were yet sinners, while we were yet in a status of enmity against God, we were his enemies. Christ died for us. How much more now does he not love us that we are his children washed by the blood of the Lamb? Amen? He loves you just as you are. Through his word, as we know his word, it is that we get to know ourselves. We know who we are, what we have, and what we can do. Through his word and the knowledge of of his word, God reveals not only himself, but he reveals how he sees us. And we humans have a hard time really understanding through God's word how he sees us. According to God's word, he sees you as his righteousness. He sees you as cleansed. He sees you as forgiven. He sees you as victorious. He sees you as overcomers. He sees you as healthy. He sees you as saved. There was a young man in Judges 6 
that had a very poor self-esteem, very poor self-image, saw himself very, very downtrodden, insignificant, and worthless. And the Lord comes to him. And in this passage, he says, Hey, Gideon, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Are you talking to me? And God says, yes, I'm talking to you. He talks Spanish too. <laughs> you are a mighty warrior. You're not the defeated person that you, you see yourself. You are not from a very insignificant little tribe in Israel that nobody takes into consideration. You are a mighty warrior of the living God. He had a hard time accepting that, if you recall the story. But that's another sermon for another time. Because the, the, Nina didn't give me more minutes. Through his word, God reveals how he sees you. The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. In right standing with God. You have the right to it all. You have been cleansed. You are sinless. You are whole. You're his friend. You're his child. So live in the reality of God's word as you read it, as you know it, and now as you pray it. What do you mean by that, you ask? I'm glad you asked. Because I will tell you. There is nothing God loves more than to hear his children Saying, repeating, verbalizing his word. Nothing. And I'll give you an example. Most parents, especially the mamas, there was one exception, but I want to talk about the mamas. Most moms, when they have their newborn baby or they have their baby just beginning to talk, my, like my great-granddaughter is here, what do we do to the babies? We go up to them, we grab them and say, Mama. Mama, right? Because we want them to learn to say what? Mama. And when the baby looks at us and at its developmental stage looks and says, Mama, oh, look at that. Did you see that? My baby said, Mama. And we get all excited and we take video and picture and we YouTube it. We send it to Facebook and Twitter it. And everybody needs to know my baby said, Mama, he repeated my words. That's how God gets all excited. When he sees us and we come to, to him and we say, Abba, Father. Oh, God just jumps and calls the angels and says, Come here, angels. Come here, Peter. Come here, Paul. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Come over here. Look at my newborn baby. Look at my child. He is saying, by my stripes, he is healed. I'm excited. Well, I got to be excited there too. Yeah. Tone it down, tone it down, chispa. Chispa means sparky in Spanish. <laughs> he gets all excited when we proclaim, when we speak his word. The exception that I talked to you about was a friend of mine who's my neighbor. They were teaching his young child to say, Mama. The baby did not say Mama. But he got all excited because the baby said, Papa. Oh, you see that? You see that? He didn't say Mama. He said, Papa. They is repeating my word, Papa. Oh, that boy was excited. <laughs> Just like God gets so excited when his children repeat Proclaim, decree, and announce his word. Can you say amen? amen? Where did I go? I got so excited. There's nothing more that he loves. And God's word is faithful. You know how I know God's word is faithful? Because he is faithful to his word. You know, if God, for one New York second, one millisecond, would not be faithful to his word, all of creation 
would come tumbling down because it was all put in place. It's all sustained by his word where he said, let there be. And there was. So we can take great comfort, strength, and trust that his word is faithful because he is faithful to his word. And his word is faithful and therefore in the midst of the situation, the, the circumstance of the illness, of the sickness, of the trial, of the turmoil, of the family drama, uh, in the midst of it all, which does happen, we can stand firm in his word and declare, in spite of what I am feeling and experiencing, I stand on your word. How many know that when Satan attacks, when life punches us in the stomach, in the gut, it hurts. He plays with our emotions, with our feelings. He plays with our thoughts and even our faith. However, in the midst of that, pray his word over the situation. Take possession of God's word, not of what the situation is. Do not take ownership of the situation. Sadly enough, we hear over and over, people declare, confess, proclaim, my sickness, my addiction, my tumor, my arthritis, my diabetes. It is not yours. It belongs to the devil. So return to sender. Take that bat and swing it out of the park back to him. Do not take what does not belong to you. Pray God's word and God's will over a bad report. When sick, declare, by his stripes I am healed. Over unsaved members, pray, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Proclaim God's word, which says, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your household shall be saved. My wife and I, we pray on a daily basis in the morning and at night, our salvation and redemption of our household. We stand on God's word. And we proclaim that as for me and my house, my children, my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren will serve the Lord. Because that's his word, and he is faithful to it. I saw that happen in my immediate family with my older brother. And I might have shared this with you before. My older brother came to the Lord. And he was the first. And then my parents came to the Lord. And then my sister came to the Lord. Well, actually, my mother, my sister, and then my sister in Mexico. And then I came to the Lord. And then my younger came to the Lord. And my brother got the word that he prayed over us. My parents. His siblings came and are serving the Lord Jesus Christ. I've seen it happen. You can't tell me it can't happen. You're too late for that. But Satan, he will attack us, and we must stand on his word. Pray his word over the sickness, over unsaved family members. When stress pray, 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 you have provided peace that goes beyond our human understanding. When worry, fear, doubt, suffering hits, these are not God's will for you. So pray God's will and God's word over them. Pray according to Psalm 119.50. My comfort in my suffering is this. Your promise preserves my life. Yes, the arrogant mock me unmercifully, but I do not turn from your law. When in sorrow, proclaim my soul is weary with sorrow. 
Strengthen me according to your word. Psalm 119, 28. When in despair, emotionally, physically, spiritually, you know that Jesus shed his blood on three different occasions for you and me? He shed his blood for our emotional health, for our physical health, and for our spiritual health. We see in Scripture, <clears throat> when he was at the Mount of Olives, at the Garden of Gethsemane, and you can look at that at your, at your leisure, Luke 22, 44, Matthew 26, where he was praying to the Father, if it's your will, let this cup pass from me. The night that he was going to die, he was in so much sorrow, agony, and emotional despair that the scripture says that he prayed so hard and his sweat came down as of drops of blood for your emotional health. He shed his blood for you at the hands of Pilate when he turned him over to the Roman soldiers who beat him, smacked him, slapped him, kicked him, and whipped him, taking off pieces of the skin of his back and his body. He suffered and he shed that blood for your physical health. Don't tell me that it is not God's will for us to have health and to live healthy. Don't tell me that we have to accept the sickness and illness that, the, that Satan and this world uh, brings to us. And that that's his will because it is not. According to God's word, he went to the point of suffering a death, a brutal, mean, inhumane death for your health because by his stripes you were healed yes we live in this world in this flesh and yes there's microbes and germs and viruses and gmos and whatever other things that are affecting our bodies that cause us sickness however that is not god's will and we do not have to accept that as God's will. We must accept God's word as his will for us and pray over those situations and declare, by his stripes, I am healed. I have the health of God in my life. And then, of course, for our spiritual health at the cross of Calvary where he died for us because of our sin. You know, sometimes it's so easy for us to accept and say, yes, I believe that Jesus died for my sins and for, uh, because of my sins for my salvation. But it's so difficult to believe that at the same time that he did that, just as you are assured of your salvation, you can be assured of the health that he has provided for you in that same sacrifice. The emotional health, the physical health, and yes, your spiritual health. To live in the reality of God's word, read it, know it, pray it, and believe it. In other words, stand on it. Ephesians 6, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done this st to stand, stand firm. With the belt of truth buckled around your waist. With the breastplate of righteousness in place. 
and with your feet fitted with a readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Scripture says, in addition, in this, with this, which you can extinguish all flaming arrows. I'm sorry, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, the helmet and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Let us go through that just one more time, and I want to emphasize some things. Number one, be strong in the Lord. You can't be strong on your own. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And then it says, take your stand. Know where you stand. Because there's devil's schemes coming against you. And it says, our struggle, we will have struggle. We do struggle in this life. But our struggle is against rulers, against authorities, or with powers of this dark world, spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. That's who our adversary is. And then he says, the antidote for that, put on the full armor of God. So when, and I want you to take a notice of that. So when, not if, but when, the day of evil comes. You know, sometimes there's some of us that say, well, if I'm serving God, why is this happening to me? It's because of the enemy that we have. And that's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when. So when the struggles come, just put on the full armor of God, that you may stand your ground and have done everything to stand. Oh, God, I read your word, as Pastor said. I not only read it, I know it, and I not only know it, but now also I, I stand, I believe it, I proclaim it. What am I to do next? He said, shut up and stand, boy. If you've done everything you need to do, yeah, stand firm and watch me go to work. Stand firm and see that the battle is the Lord. After you've done everything to stand, stand firm with the belt of truth, which is your core, with the breastplate of righteousness, which is a right heart with God, right standing with God. And it says with your feet fitted with a readiness. What does that mean? That means that you are ready and you are not caught by surprise. That comes from the gospel of peace. And then when I was reading this, it reminded me of the infomercials. But if you call now, there's more. And he says, in addition to all this, there's more. Take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows. Take on the helmet. And the helmet is the protection of your head. The helmet of salvation is the protection of your mind. It is the protection of your thoughts that Satan comes and attacks. It is the helmet of salvation, the helmet, the helmet of health, and the sword the weapon of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Men, let me address you quickly here. You are the priest of your household. Say with me with loud voice, I am the priest of my household. Ladies, to your man with a loud voice, look at him and say, you are the priest of our household. Single ladies, say with a loud voice, Jesus is the priest of my household. So brothers, you are the priest of your household. And as the priest of your household, stand your ground. Exercise your God-ordained priestly duty, responsibility, and obligation. 
proclaim God's word, God's blessing, and God's favor, God's salvation, God's health over your household and over your family. Jesus did it all for you. He gave it all for you, and he gave it all to you. So don't let the devil isolate you and separate you from the vine, from the saints. He will destroy you if he achieves that. See, the devil wants to fight you one-on-one, -on -one, mano a mano. He wants you to isolate yourself and go home and cower and say, oh, my God, I feel so sick. I'm not doing well. I got a bad report. Oh, but I don't want to bother anybody. I'll just stay here and I'll fight the devil with myself or by myself. And don't. He wants to isolate you and play games with your mind, your emotions, your faith. And try to steal your joy, your peace, and your sleep. He will have you questioning your faith, your salvation, your right standing with God. He will have you questioning his word. He will have you questioning your worthiness. But that is when and that is why we must call the reinforcement. Call in the cavalry. Call in the elders of the church and the prayer warriors of the Most High. James 5 says, is anyone sick? Let him call the elders of the church. Let them circle the wagons. Let them pray and call upon the name of the Lord over them. Anoint with oil, with it, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, a divine intervention. Let him call upon the name of the Lord. You see, when you're going through situations, when you have illness, when you're going through circumstances, you must call upon the elders so they may pray over you and call upon the name of the Lord, the Lord that is above every name. The name of Jesus, Yeshua, our healer, is above the name of every sickness, every cancer, every tumor, every arthritis. The name of Jesus is over every situation. So when you come and call upon the name of the Lord, on which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, understand this, everything that is within you, in your body, all sickness, infirmity, depression or worry or fear it bows down before the name of Jesus which is the name above every name everything that is within you that is not God's will will bow down and submit to the will of the living God whose name is Jesus of Nazareth Amen. call the reinforcements do not go into this battle alone. For it is not your flesh that you're fighting. The rulers, authorities, powers in dark worlds, the spiritual forces of evil that you are fighting. Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 10. For we live in this world and we not wage war as the world does because our weapons that we, we fight are not carnal but they are mighty to accomplish, to fulfill that which he ascended to do. Proclaim and decree God's word. Proclamation is an official announcement of great dealing. A public or official announcement, especially one dealing with matter of great importance. Your family, your health, your children, your loved ones are of matter of great importance. Proclaim God's word over them. Decree comes from the word an official order issued by legal authority. You have the legal authority of Jesus Christ. Make an official announcement, an official order issued by the legal authority of God's word invested in you. The resurrection power of Jesus Christ that abides, resides, and, they'll de and lives with you. So serve notice in the name of Jesus. Decree and proclaim 
Shout to that situation God's word over your healing, physically, emotionally, your mind, your soul. Decree and proclaim his word. You know, Peter, as he was entering the temple, he saw a lame man. And with the authority invested in him, he said to the man, get up and walk. He made an official decree. Act on it. James 1. Do not merely listen to the word. So to deceive. Lie to yourselves. Do what, is, what it says. Act on it. Walk in the reality of his kingdom. His kingdom has come. His kingdom is in us, and his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Cross Point Church, with this I conclude. My encouragement, my challenge, my directive to you is twofold. Get in the word of God, and two, get the word of God in you. Now go forth, read it, know it, pray it, stand on it, proclaim it, and act on it, and live in the reality of God's word for you. Be blessed.